Hello and welcome to CIS uh, 278. This is a follow-up. This is part two. 179 was the first one. And this is the syllabus. I want to walk you through it. The first thing here to notice is that you can get a hold of me through email at this address. However, I prefer that you use the D2L class list. If you just go up to the class list here and open that guy up and then go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see my name. You can click this little down arrow and click send email. The reason I prefer that you do it that way is because it automatically puts in the subject line what class you're in. When I'm running three different classes, it's hard for me to you know, wrap my head around who's in which class. I, I tend to see the names, but I can't remember which class they're in. So please use the D2L or at the very least put the class number in the subject line. Wow, look at all these people I know. There's Paul, I know you, Sam, uh, Adam, Nathan, Florida, uh, Melissa. What bunch of you I know. Welcome, guys. Good to see you all again. Wow. Uh, I mentioned Adam. Yeah, my goodness, a whole bunch of names I know in there. Well, welcome. Uh, anyway, back to the syllabus. All right, I want to pull, uh, bring out this section here. My philosophy about people and exceptions and my philosophy about differences in abilities and cultures. Uh, under my philosophy about people and exceptions, I have this quote. Everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. I really believe that. You're not just a number or a name to me. You're a real person that I care about and I know that people go through struggles all the time. You have fights with your uh, spouse or your boyfriend, girlfriend, your parents, your children. You have illnesses. You have challenges with learning in some cases. You ha you struggle with procrastination. You have uh, somebody who gets sick or is dying on you. Um, you have accidents, financial struggles, all these different things. And I walk a fine tightrope between... Uh, holding people's feet to the fire and, and asking them to push themselves, but at the same time being compassionate and lenient. It's a very difficult thing. So uh, what that boils down to is that I reserve the right to make decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. However, don't think that just because you know, you're in the hospital all week and so you're going to be late uh, with, uh, with something that that you're going to get a free pass and I'm not going to take any points away. That's just the way life is. Uh, when you are not able to do something, you don't get the benefit for having done it. In fact, the reality is, I put another quote here, the reality is a good excuse for not doing something is not the same as having done it. My philosophy about differences in cultures and abilities. Another tightrope I walk here is holding people to a high standard but at the same time realizing that not everybody has the same uh, footing. So for example if I want you to uh, use proper spelling grammar and all that good stuff uh, English um, but English is not your primary language sometimes that's difficult for some people. The terminology is different for for different cultures and so on. So I try to be somewhat lenient but at the same time remind you that of proper grammar and spelling. That's just one example. There are many other areas of standards that I could hold you to and usually try to. However, I do have to recognize that sometimes uh, it's not a fair footing for everybody. So please um, uh, allow me to, to correct you and to remove points if you don't hit a certain standard um, if I have to. But at the same time, uh, you know, if I do that and you feel that it's unfair because you have a special circumstance, let me know. In fact, do communicate with me. Communicate with me if you struggle with, um, it could be anything, uh, you struggle with, with problems with a disability, you struggle with problems with a, um, a cultural uh, issue. You know, in some cultures, uh, kids aren't supposed to go to college. They're supposed to be out working on the farm. <laughs> and, and so they, they suffer from this, this negative uh, attitude already from their family. And you know, you talk to me about those things. I want to hear you and I want to help you as best I can or point you in the direction of some help when I can. Attendance. 
attendance comes in the form of participation points. Uh, if all work is submitted and due uh, by the due date and time, in other words, everything is done before the due date and submitted, you get 10 participation points. If there's any one thing missing, anything missing uh, at the time that it's due, in other words, something is late or just not there yet, you get a deduction of three participation points for that item. If all of the work is missing, if you just don't do anything for a whole week, you get zero participation points for that week. So that's how it works. When I grade typically on Monday and everything's due Sunday night at midnight, I will look to see if you were late with something or if something's missing. If you were late or something's missing, then I will deduct participation points per item or if they're all missing uh, at that point, then um, uh, then zero points for participation for that week. We will have assignments, quizzes, labs, and then exams. Uh, labs, the first few are going to be assignments. So the first couple of weeks, uh, three weeks, I believe, are all uh, paper assignments. And then after that, it's all hands-on labs. And we're going to use something called Packet Tracer. When you submit a packet tracer file, I typically ask for two different files. One uh, file will be your um, packet tracer file itself, and the other one will be the lab write-up. And so there'll be two files that you'll submit at a time for almost all of the labs. There are exceptions. There are times when I'm only looking for one or the other, but I will let you know in that lab. All labs and assignments do Sunday midnight at the end of the week that they're assigned. Quizzes also do Sunday midnight at the end of the week that they're assigned. Late quizzes are accepted. Just like labs and assignments, though, you will get deducted participation points for lateness. Midterm and finals. So in week six, we'll have a midterm covering one through five. And then at the end, we'll have a final covering the entire course. These tend to be hard because they have to do with things like you know, certain commands and so forth. Uh, and that's, that is a, a tough kind of exam to do. Um, however, you can do it. I, I know you can. Um, academic honesty and student rights. Uh, plagiarism is a serious thing in my book. Uh, however, I do, I don't mind at all if you work together on labs and turn in, as long as each of you turns it in, turns in the same result in the labs. But when it comes to quizzes and tests, I expect you to do your own work. Let's just take a look now at the, um, at this. Oh, by the way, I want to mention one other thing before I forget it. The textbook. This is your textbook. Uh, it looks like this. It's called CCNA routing and switching and then it says complete deluxe study guide and this is second edition somewhere it says oh yeah second edition uh, i have been told in the past that what the bookstore stocks is a different book if that happens please see this this big bold thing right here some students have reported they've received the wrong book from the bookstore if that happens, please just use the index to find the most appropriate section in your book for the topic that we're dealing with and read that section. All right, so it's okay if you use another book. I am not taking quiz questions directly out of this book. That's not going to happen. I just want you to have some somebody other than me, other than my notes, uh, a second uh, viewpoint or a second way of explaining each of the topics so that you have a better understanding of it. So if you don't use this exact book, that's okay. As long as the book that you have has these topics, things like VLSM and wildcard masks and, and port security and spanning tree protocol and so on. All right, so this is the way the, the, um, the quarter will shake out. We've got 11 weeks and then we have a finals week. Now, uh, the first... Uh, what three weeks you'll have assignments you have a quiz each week of course you'll have two assignments each week for the first three weeks and then I will supply some notes and also the reference in this textbook uh, on where that where the reading is for that section 
in my notes as usual and most of you are aware you've seen this kind of thing before and that's not where i wanted to go at all uh let's go to module one module one there it is and then my notes And you'll see I do have videos. I don't have videos for every section. A couple of times I have you watch somebody else's video. We'll explain those when we get there. But uh, please do watch these videos. I tend to rely on them heavily when it comes to quiz questions. Let's go back down here now to the plan. We're going to talk about network review and then cabling in the first week. Something called VLSM and wildcard masks. VLSM is a type of subnetting. And then wildcard masks, which is something new that you have not seen before, I guarantee. And then um, uh, in the third week, something called route summarization and IP version 6. So we will look at all of those in the first three weeks. Then we're going to begin to take off on the Cisco stuff. We're going to look at the operating, the Cisco Internetwork operating system in the fourth week and then some basic router and switch setup and something called packet tracer since this is an online class and we don't have live equipment to work on packet tracer is a simulator which will simulate that live equipment and it is very very good but it takes a little time to learn to use it in the fifth week we'll deal with uh, port security and uh, that just has to do with how to how to turn off and on ports and how to flag uh, when when things go when somebody tries to do something on a on a uh, switch port that they're not supposed to do and then we'll talk about stp and vlans uh, spanning tree protocol and virtual lands in the sixth week inter vlan routing in the seventh week routing protocols rip in the eighth week and then more routing protocols eigrp and ospf in the ninth week and then access control lists and then finally diagramming networks and equipment so you can see that at least uh, four through ten we're dealing with a lot of hands-on configuration stuff and this class is more lab than notes it's more lab than anything else and you'll get sick of labs but they will be good for you all right so let's let's just have a good time with this course uh, as far as layout and i'm already 12 minutes into this thing but as far as layout of this course uh, each module is separated in notes and resources quizzes and then labs so notes and resources are where my notes are that have the videos embedded in them and then in this first week i've also given you parts of this book in case you haven't gotten the book yet i can't do that for the whole course because of copyright laws but at least the first couple of chapters i give them to you to get you started and then all the quizzes notice in notes and resources there's nothing that your grade depends on but in quizzes and labs there is something that your grade depends on so there's your quiz for week one and then in their labs and assignments here's your two assignments so that's how this thing works all the way down through this now bear in mind that uh, i'm making a few changes as from last quarter uh, when I taught this, the last quarter um, was the first time I taught it. And now we're kind of, you know, I learned some things the first time. And so I'm making some changes. So when you look at your grade book and, or you look down through the future stuff, uh, things might change around by the time we get to that module. So don't be surprised by that. But um, it shouldn't change too much. <laughs> so... Don't worry too much. For example, uh, summer was only eight modules, but now we have 11 modules. So those are still hidden and they aren't filled out yet. And I've got to move some things down from one module to another module. Things are a lot slower than they were in the summer because we only have eight weeks to teach it all in the summer. So don't worry about the changes that are upcoming or that you see for future modules. Uh, the one that we're in at any given time will be the correct module at that time. All right, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the course.